Hello, and welcome to Iron USA's Wednesday with the World webinar series. We are excited to be here today for an Iron International Book Club mini lesson. Before we jump in, we wanted to share a few tips for participating in the webinar and making this experience as smooth as possible. As some of you are already doing, please continue to use the chat box to engage with others. Please make sure your messages are set to all panelists and attendees so everyone can see your questions and comments. If you have a question, you can click on Q&A to type them in, or you can type them directly in the chat box as we go along, and we'll be sure to address them by the end of the webinar. If your connection is slow, please close all unnecessary programs. You can restart your computer or connect directly to your router if possible. Hi, my name is Alexander Levin Epstein, and today I'll be joined by my colleagues Jennifer Russell and Faye Stump. I'd like to take a moment first to acknowledge the Iron USA education team for their support. Thank you to Nicole, Connie, and Roshana for all they are doing behind the scenes. We are excited to have you all join us for the next hour. And now we would like to get a sense of who is joining us today. Please introduce yourself in the chat box if you haven't done so already and share where you are joining from as well as your professional, professional role. I see that we have people from France, from Texas, from Moldova, from New York, from Azerbaijan. So from all over, that's amazing. Thank you so much for being here and joining us from India as well, awesome. So today, Faye Stump will be facilitating the Where I'm From mini lesson. Following that, Jennifer will share some tips for online teaching and learning. At the end, we will have some time for your questions and closing announcements. Faye Stump was born in Beirut, Lebanon and immigrated to the United States with her parents who were Palestinian refugees. She grew up in Wareton, West Virginia and graduated from Fairmont State College with a bachelor's degree in education, majoring in English and library sciences. She obtained a master's degree from West Virginia University in curriculum and instruction and a master's in educational administration from mm -hmm. Washington University. Faye helped introduce global education through IRN to Winchester Public Schools and to teachers in Berkeley County, West Virginia, supporting four cohorts of IRN Bridge programming. She attended the IRN 2017 conference in Morocco and was the local coordinator for the 2018 IRN conference in Winchester, Virginia. She retired as library media specialist at John Hanley High School, where she still substitutes occasionally. She serves as an IRON Global Education Ambassador and enjoys collaborating with teachers to involve students in IRON through, through the International Book Project. Welcome, Faye. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, um, Alexander. And I am so excited that many of you have joined us for today's um, session. I'm wondering, you know, how many of you have ever belonged to a book club and, and whether you've enjoyed it. On the screen right now, you can see the many benefits of a book club. Um, it's wonderful to read books alone, but it's even more wonderful whenever we can connect with friends and people that we know to discuss um, a special book that we've read. And I want to stress that book clubs are for all ages. Preschool children can get together and share a book and react to it. And just like the adults that belong um, to the local book club that I participate here where I live, um, adults can also gain much from a book club. And, and here are just a few of the benefits of connecting with people about the books we read. Even more important today, um, during this pandemic, how wonderful it is that we are able to use media to connect. And although it's great to be face to face and in person, you know, with the people that we want to talk to books about, um, it's also wonderful to connect using technology, not just with people in our own community, but with people all over the world. And that's what the International Book Club does. It gives our students a chance not just to talk about books with their classmates, but with students in many different countries. In the International Book Club, <clears throat> you can take advantage of many different activities. Um, for example, you can recommend a book to others and you can read others' recommendations to get ideas of what you want to read next. 
Many teachers form a book club partnership with another class or school, and together they decide what they would like to do. Um, you can follow a suggested lesson plan for some specific books that we feature. And that's what we're going to do today. We're taking one of our featured books and we're actually using the lesson plan that's posted in the International Book Club and doing it together. If you speak <clears throat> different languages, you can read bilingual books aloud to each other, uh, whether it's your native language or a language that you're learning and studying in school. And uh, you can also read a book of your choosing with a partner and dialogue with each other using many different options. You can um, write about the books in our forum. You can also use technology by posting videos or slide programs, art, photography, um, and you can also use Flipgrid and, and many other ways in which you can communicate about the books that you're reading. <clears throat> Today, this is what, can we go back one slide, please? Today, this is what we're going to do together as we follow the where are you from lesson plan. We're going to think about where we are from. And if you could right now in the chat room, um, if you have not already done so, if you could please introduce yourself and tell us um, the city and the state or the country where you live. It would be wonderful to have an idea um, of where you're from if you joined us late. If you could please add that to the chat room. Okay, today we're going to read a picture book. And I want to stress that picture books are not just for children. Um, picture books are amazing works of art that have messages for all, all people, not just children, but adults, uh, teenagers as well. We're going to listen <clears throat> to a poem entitled, Where I'm From. And in some ways, it, it relates to the picture book that we're going to read. We also today are going to share some student poetry models, poems that have already been written by members of the International Book Club. And they have recorded themselves reading the poems, and we're going to share those with you. And then we're going to do some writing. We're going to write our own Where I'm From poem. And I'm going to ask all of you to participate. Uh, whether you're a student, a teacher, uh, a child, this is an activity that everyone can do. And we're going to write our own poems and hopefully you will take the time to share it with the world. Okay, on the next slide <clears throat> is an introduction to the picture book that we're going to read today. You know, in the United States, many of our citizens were not born here. And this is true for our author and our illustrator. Shamile Saeed Mendez was born in Argentina. So a shout out to any of you that are joining us from, from Argentina. Uh, but she now lives in the United States and she has written this amazing picture book, you know, Where Are You From? And it makes me wonder whether as a child immigrant uh, like myself, whether she was often asked that very same question. And our illustrator is a talented artist that comes to us from South Korea. Jamie Kim um, is also an immigrant, and uh, you will see through her illustrations that she has a very special talent. Um, so I want to uh, acknowledge our author and our illustrator. I want to encourage you, if you don't presently have this book, it would make um, a wonderful addition to your classroom or to your home library and um, I am going to share the book with you today. On the next screen are some special words that appear in the book. And because not all of us are uh, native English speakers or may not be familiar with the Spanish words you know, that are here, um, I wanted to just spend a little time looking at these words. In the chat box, because I would like this to be interactive, can you, if you know what any of these words mean, can you write the word and tell us what it means? And I'll give you about a minute to do that, please. So what we're doing now is, is uh, tapping into our prior knowledge. You know, what do we already know about some information that's going to appear in the book? Do you know what abuelo means? What are pompous? What is a gaucho? 
And is anyone familiar with the Southern Cross? What is that? Okay, wonderful. Susan has told us that abuela is grandpa, so a grandfather, wonderful. And gaucho, good. Okay, is cowboy. And um, Rudy is telling us that the pampas are big lands with small vegetation. And Jennifer says that it's a region in Argentina. Argentina and the gauchos are like cowboys here. Wonderful, okay, wonderful. All right, if we could look at the next slide, um, we'll see if our prior knowledge is correct. Yes, abuelo is the Spanish word for grandfather. And there's a picture of Pampas there to show you that they are extensive treeless plains in South America. And on the next slide, we see what a gaucho is and how he might be dressed. And there's a picture of the sky with a Southern Cross mapped out for us. Um, it's a constellation that is seen in the Southern Hemisphere, and the four brightest stars form a cross. Okay, so now you'll recognize these words as we read, as we read the book. All right. Um, the, okay, did we lose the picture here? We're switching over. Okay. Ah, okay. I think that um, you can see the book now. We're looking at the title page, all right? Um, and the title is, Where Are You From? Written by Shamile Mendez and illustrated by Jamie Kim. I hope that you can see the wonderful illustrations. I'm going to just adjust my chair to make sure that you can. Okay, and we will begin. Where are you from, they ask. Is your mom from here? Is your dad from there, they ask. I'm from here, from today. Same as everyone else, I say. No, where are you really from, they insist. They must be noticing that she is different in some way and they're just curious. They're very curious about where did she come from? So they keep asking her. She responds and tells us, I ask Abuelo because he knows everything. And like me, he looks like he doesn't belong. Where am I from? Abuelo thinks. His eyes squint like he's looking inside his heart for an answer. You come from the pompous. The open free land, he says. You're from the gaucho, brave and strong. From the brown river that cleanses and feeds the land, that gives us the grain for our bread, the milk from the cows. You're from mountains so high, they tickle Senor Cilio's belly, where the condor roosts his family and the jaguar prowls the night. But you're also from the warm blue oceans, the copper warriors tried to tame, and the elegant palm trees stretch their fingers to caress. You're from hurricanes and dark storms, and a tiny singing frog that calls the island people home when the sun goes to sleep. From this land where our ancestors built a home for all, even when they were in chains because of the color of their skin. You're from the grandmothers who search for their grandchildren waiting always waiting in a plaza, their white handkerchiefs wrapping the sorrow of their thoughts. You come from the sunshine that lights our path in this world and the rain that washes away our mistakes. But Abuela, I ask, where am I really from? Abuela laughs, you want a place? 
He points to his heart. You're from here, from my love and the love of all those before us. From those who dreamed of you because of a song sung under the Southern Cross or the words in a book written under the light of the North Star. You, you are from all of us. And she responds, I am. And seems satisfied with that answer. Okay, now I'd like to know, if we could go to the next slide, there are a few questions. And again, using the chat box, if you could please respond to at least one of these questions. What was your favorite part? Did any part of the book remind you of your life in any way? How is the place you are from different than the place this child grew up in? How is the place you are from similar? And if you could ask the author or the illustrator any question, what would it be? So if we were in a classroom, or if we were sharing this book um, with each other in a video conference that we had scheduled, okay, students could now in their book club begin to discuss some of these things as they talk about the books. So again, in your um, chat box, if you could please respond to just one of the questions. Okay, Susan tells us that she also lives in a warm place. So she's finding a similarity there. Kathy says that the place Inam is from is Wyoming and it is similar to the mountainous part of the Pampas, okay? Um, Harmeet tells us that the book is colorful. So that's something that she likes about it. And Rudy is saying that her place is very different because it's small compared to the place that, that this child is from. Mahalia also says that she's from a warm place. Uh, Therese says, my favorite part is when the grandfather closed his eyes and smiled before he told the girl where she was from. And Nisha says that the best part of the story or the poem was when Abuelo says, you belong from here, and he points to his heart. I like the way the text curved. Oh. Lily Rose would like to tell the author this book was really cool. Her favorite part was when the Abuelo pointed to his heart. And Nicole says there are no wide open spaces where she lives in New York City, but there are where her ancestors are from in the Philippines and in Hungary. Okay, wonderful, great reactions. Thank you so much. And we probably could spend, if we had the time and we were in um, a, a conference with two classrooms together, I, I hope that you can see the wonderful discussion that might take place among the students as they read the book together and then discuss it together. Okay, on the next slide, I'd like to introduce you to a poet that I have enjoyed for a long time. Her name is George Ella Lyon. And I know that her first name is unusual because George in English is usually the name of a man, but, but she is a female. And in uh, 2015, she was appointed to the position as Kentucky Poet Laureate. In the United States, many states designate a Poet Laureate to serve for a certain time period to help um, promote the art form of poetry in their state. And we also usually have a national poet laureate. Um, that poet laureate has sometimes read at um, inauguration ceremonies for our, our president. So she is an accomplished poet from the state of Kentucky, which is very close to West Virginia, where I live. All right, on the next slide, I'm introducing some words that you are going to see in her poem. 
Some of these things might be familiar to you, some of them might be new things, but we included the pictures so that you could visualize what they are. And the reason that I want you to think about these words ahead of time is I want you to remember that as a writer, the specific is terrific. And George Ella does a wonderful job of using very specific things in her poem, just as Shamile did in her book when she described through her grandfather where she's from. So you might not be familiar with Clorox and carbon tetrachloride, but they are very ordinary products. Clorox is used um, to make our clothes bright, whiter whenever, whenever we wash. And carbon tetrachloride is um, actually not used any longer. It was a cleaning agent that people used at one time, um, but now it's been uh, proven to be not environmentally safe and, and it's no longer used, but it's just was an ordinary cleaning product in George Ellis' childhood. Maybe you have eaten beets, the vegetable beets. Um, unless you live on a farm, you may not be familiar with an auger, okay, which is a tool that's used to dig holes for fencing, and elm trees and forsythia bushes are things that, uh, plants that are, that are very native to the region where, where I live and, and in Kentucky as well. Okay, and if we could go to the next slide, we're actually going to listen to George Ellis' poem twice. Here you see the poem as it appeared when she wrote it. Uh, but we have a reading of it, and, and I think it's exciting sometimes to hear our authors and our poets read their works um, and listen to them actually, you know, saying the words for us. So follow along, and as you do, please pay particular attention to the very specific details that George Ella uses. Where I'm from, I am from clothespins, from Clorox and carbon tetrachloride. I am from the dirt under the back porch, black, glistening. It tasted like beets. I am from the forsythia bush, the Dutch elm, whose long gone limbs I remember as if they were my own. I'm from fudge and eyeglasses, from Imogene and Alifair. I'm from the know-it-alls and the pass-it-ons, from perk up and pipe down. I'm from he restoreth my soul with the cotton ball lamb and 10 verses I can say myself. I'm from Artemis and Billy's branch, fried corn and strong coffee. From the finger my grandfather lost to the auger, the eye my father shut to keep his sight. Under my bed was a dress box, spilling old pictures, a sift of lost faces to drift beneath my dreams. I am from those moments, snapped before I budded, leaf fall from the family tree. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed her wonderful accent that's typical of, of people that um, come from Kentucky. Uh, our southern accent. Okay, on the next slide, we're going to listen to the poem again. Um, and this time, you're going to see another way that you could possibly share the Where I'm From poem that you're going to write. Um, someone has taken uh, George Ella's poem and they have put it into a video with the text on the screen and then with narration added as well. So let's just enjoy this visual uh, edition of the poem. Where I'm from, I am from clothespins, from Clorox and carbon tetrachloride. I am from the dirt under the back porch, black, glistening, it tasted like beets. I am from the forsythia bush, the Dutch elm, whose long gone limbs I remember as if they were my own. I'm from fudge and eyeglasses, from Imogene and Alifair. I'm from the know-it-alls and the pass-it-ons, from perk up and pipe down. I'm from he restoreth my soul with the cotton ball lamb and 10 verses I can say myself. 
I'm from Artemis and Billy's Branch. Fried corn and strong coffee from the finger my grandfather lost to the auger, the eye my father shut to keep his sight. Under my bed was a dress box spilling old pictures, a sift of lost faces to drift beneath my dreams. I am from those moments, snapped before I budded, leaf fall from the family tree. Okay, so I'm wondering now uh, whether you have a better understanding of the poem when you were able to see some illustrations, just like picture books give us illustrations that help us to understand them better. So reading it a second time and seeing the illustrations may have helped you as well. Um, if you have a question about the poem, could you please put the question in the chat box and I'll do my best to answer it. One of the questions when I've used this poem in classrooms that I'm often asked is, who are Imogene and Alifair? Who are they? And I always thought that they were maybe her childhood friends. She has an unusual name, George Ella. I thought, well, maybe Imogene and Alifair were her friends. But she recently um, told us that they are women in the neighborhood where she grew up in Harlan County, Kentucky. Alifair had a beauty shop in her garage and Imogene gave out the best treats at Halloween, homemade popcorn balls, caramel apples and things like that. And because she loves words, she relished the sound of those unusual names, um, especially together. And uh, those women were important memories in her childhood and that's why she decided to, um, to put them. Could you um, put your questions in the chat box if you have any about the poem? Maybe if we could go back two slides to the, um, the, the words of the poem. Yeah, there. So looking at the poem, is there anything that you would like to ask about it? Particularly if there's a, a word or a phrase or some image that um, doesn't make sense to you or you're wondering what she meant by it. I'm not seeing any questions, so we will go on. And, and the next thing that we're going to do, if we could um, advance to a couple of slides, we now have the opportunity to listen to some students um, from different countries sharing with us their Where I'm From poems. And our first student is a young man by the name of Ahmed, and he goes to school in Kasifa, Israel. Um, and I had the wonderful opportunity of visiting his school and doing this lesson in his classroom in October. And after the students read, uh, wrote their poems, they stood up and they read them for each other. So we are um, actually going to listen to him and he is in his classroom in Israel reading his poem. Um, you have to listen carefully. And I just wanna give a shout out to his teacher, Maha Alawat and also um, to the country coordinator of Israel who is joining us today. Um, and her name is Rudy and she has a couple of wonderful projects in iron as well. Okay, here's Ahmed's poem. Faye, yes. Faye. Yes. Um, and Connie, before you start the poem, there were a couple of questions that came in uh, about the where I'm from um, poem in the chat box. I'd be happy to read out to you um, or read to the group. Um, one was uh, Lily Rose would like to know why the dirt tasted like beets. Okay. Um, Let me answer that one first. Okay, that is an example. Um, black glistening, it tasted, you know, it tasted like, um, like beets. All right, if she's comparing the dirt to beets, do you think that Lily Rose, that she likes the beets or that maybe she didn't like the beets? I'm going to guess that she did not like it, but what a wonderful comparison, right? Um, to say that um, it tasted like, you know, the dirt tasted, or the beets tasted like dirt. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that she did not like them. Okay, the next question. 
is uh, why did her father need to shut his eyes to keep his sight? And this one is from Dana. Okay, um, I, I don't know for sure, but I know that sometimes when people have visual problems um, and one eye is, is, is weak, um, they actually uh, cover that eye to make the other eye stronger and work a little bit harder. So I'm going to assume that her father was losing his sight in one eye, and so he covered it with an eye patch to make the other eye stronger. And that's just an inference that I'm making. I'm not sure if I'm exactly right, but that's what I think. But good questions. Great, thanks for those questions. Okay, I can also um, see now that there's a chat that says she presented each and every part, whether it was good or bad, where she lived. It's true on her part. Thank you, Harmeet, for sharing that. And I tell students that, that whenever they write their where I'm from poems, it doesn't have to be just the happy things. Um, you know, there were some sad things in, in her poem, like the fact that her father, you know, lost, or her grandfather lost a finger. So um, our poems represent, and our writing represents who we are. And sometimes that's not always um, uh, good things that happen where we're from. And it's okay to write about both the good and the bad. Um, and many students who have posted poems in, in Iron have done that. Okay, great comments and questions. Thank you so much. Okay, Ahmed. Where I am from, I'm from. I'm from the camels and the horse sun, the, the hot sun and the sandy storm weather from the handmade clothed pool. I am from, I am from the, br the brown and the golden desert, the brilliant open fields, the land of valleys, from the, gil the giggling of kids while watching fireworks. I am from, I am from the goats and sheep's home, the tasty goat's milk, and the, sh the shiny sheep butter, butter, the raw camel's meat, the man's up meal with the radical lettering tea, that, taste, that tasted with mint and zaka. I'm from, I'm from the original music, Big Heart music, the dehaya of young and old men, the woman singing in the wedding party, and the beautiful evening on the, the Hitler town. I'm from, I'm from the strong smoke garden, the Arabian coffee sharp smoke, the fire and the cigarettes bad smoke, the henna while women groan in their hands and the musician flowers smell. Ahmed is definitely from a place different than Argentina and he describes it so well for us. Okay, our next student model that we're going to take a look at decided to put her poem uh, with pictures and shared it in the iron form that way. So I want to give a shout out to Phoebe, who's an eighth grader at South Middle School in Martinsburg, West Virginia, and to her amazing teacher, Cindy Everts, who has uh, partnered with, with several teachers uh, around the world to bring global learning to her classroom. Where I'm from by Phoebe. I am from fingers running over the thin pages of a book as I learn to read. From broken Crayola crayons littering the floor and soft, squishy Play-Doh under my fingernails. I am from the soft whisper of the wind in my grandparents' orchard, quiet, gentle, often hushed by youthful giggles. I am from looming sunflowers and tomato plants, reaching higher every year until the hands that had planted them had been weathered away with age. I am from handmade peach ice cream in July and booming laughter filling every corner of the room. I am from Melvin and David who worked 15 hours a day only to get $1 in return. I'm from summer cookouts by a pool and long road trips from the back seat. From study hard and use your manners. I am from listening to Elvis gospel on the way to church every Sunday and the sweet hymnals I know by heart. I am from the smell of freshly baked pepperoni rolls and sweet apple cider at a holiday party. 
I am from Larry, always joking, until his days began to fade. I am from pictures and stories to tell of my ancestors' youth and their struggle to leave behind their modest beginnings. From the philosophy of hope and hard work always paying off and from generations before me working so I could have a better life than them. I am from a small town in the mountains, left behind long ago, but never forgotten. Okay, that's um, a wonderful poem by Phoebe and I thank her for sharing it with us. Our third student model is a young lady from India. Her name is Nisha and she goes to St. Peter's High School. And this amazing young girl and her sister and mother stayed up until the wee hours, I think it was like one or two o'clock in the morning in India, in order to join live a classroom in California taught by Mr. Alan Witten um, at Sunburst Academy. And it was just uh, wonderful to be able to share uh, with her and with the students in, in California this lesson. Um, I want to give a shout out to her principal, Suvarna Kupa, um, who believes that reading is so important, has been passionate about involvement in the International Book Club. And please listen to Nisha's amazing poem, which she decided to illustrate showing you some pictures on the computer as she reads it for us. And Nisha is actually on the webinar today. So thank you so much, Nisha, for sharing your poem with us. Where I am from? I'm from a canvas, from paints and paint brushes. I'm from a creeper and climber in every room. Green, abundant, making the home feel fresh. I'm from a banyan tree with aerial roots, strong and resplendent. I'm from late night novel reading, from Ram Singh and Nisha Singh. I'm from manager time and NF of chocolates. I'm from Diwali, a festival of lights. I'm from the heart of India, Madhya Pradesh juicy jalebis and spicy biryanis from the diligent dad working for the army the mom aspirational towards teaching i'm from those pictures which start a never-ending chain of stories symbolizing the cherished moments of love and affection thank you nisha again so there you saw poems from students from three different countries and through the international book club they were able to share the poems um, with other students. Okay, on the next slide, it's time for you to start becoming a writer yourself. Um, I hope that you have a, a paper and pencil handy, or if you're using your computer, uh, you might want to open up another um, document uh, on the screen and, and brainstorm with me for some things that you might put in your own Where I'm From poem. And I encourage all of you, whether you are a child or um, a student, whether you're uh, a parent, a teacher, uh, try to create your own Where I'm From poem to share with your family and to share with us in the IRON community. So one of the things that's great about writing um, is when you can think of details to put in your work that appeals to the senses. That will make your writing more showing rather than telling. It will make it more specific. And remember that the specific is terrific. Okay. So in the column that says touch, or as you're just taking some notes, think about some things that you are able to physically touch around you. You know, maybe in your childhood you had a favorite toy or a blanket or something um, that was meant something to you and that you enjoyed having it near you because of the way that it felt. Maybe a favorite piece of clothing. Um, George Ellis says, the Dutch elm whose long gone limbs I remember as if they were my own. Oh, I see her climbing that tree and I can feel the roughness of the bark, you know, as she, as she climbs it. So that detail appeals not just to the sense of sight, but also to the sense of, of touch. So list as, as many things as you can that appeal to the sense of touch. Okay, all three of our student poets featured today did a great job of giving us many images that we can see. Okay, and just like um, George Ella did as well. 
a dress box, spilling old pictures. You know, that's a detail that I can see. So what, what things around you can you see? It can be, you know, perhaps a physical description, things that you might see in the town or the state or the country that you're from, things in your home that you see. Okay, and what about things that we taste? So those beets that George Ella didn't like, uh, the mansa meat that Ahmed eats, the pepperoni rolls that Phoebe enjoyed. What are the things that, that help to define where you're from? Rather than just saying the city and the state, aren't the foods that we enjoy that are typical to our region or our area, don't they help to really show where we're from? So what are some things, whether you like them or you don't like them? What are some things that you hear? And I know that I'm going quickly, but remember that you can um, always come back to this and add to it. Um, Iron will be sharing the lesson plan and there are uh, links to these documents and templates. So you can come back to it. You're not gonna completely finish your poem today, but I just wanted with the time that we have left to give you a jump start for it. Okay, what are some things that you hear? Oh, if we're real quiet at night, when we sit on our deck, we hear the sound of whippoorwills, a bird that uh, is native to our region. And it's a lovely sound. Uh, I, Georgella says that um, she's from perk up and pipe down. I'm surprised nobody asked about that. You know, probably things that her parents or adults in her life said to her often, perk up. You know, get lively, pay attention, pipe down, you're being too loud. What are some things your parents say to you a lot? Or your friends? Or are there sounds of music or sounds of nature where you live that might be things that you want to put in your poem? Okay, and what about things that appeal to your sense of smell? They might appeal to your sense of smell and your sense of taste. When my mother makes matfuni, my husband complains about the strong fish smell and the onions, but everyone in our family loves to eat the matfuni, one of our favorite dishes. So some of the details that you put may appeal to more than one sense, but what are some things that are part of your life or part of where you're from in my hometown of Weirton, the time that I was growing up, we had steel mills that um, emitted a lot of pollution. So sometimes the smell wasn't very pleasant. Okay, so continue to work with this, brainstorming for as many things as you can. But we're going to go on to the next slide. And this is another document that you can access from the lesson plan that will be emailed to you. But if you could please just try to, let's do the first three lines together. Okay, just the first three lines. And you don't have to use this template. You can use it. Some students have used it. You can just go and do it any way that you want, probably repeating the phrase, I'm from, or you know where I'm from, often throughout your poem. And I would suggest that your poem not rhyme, so you're not picking words just to complete a rhyme, but rather words that, that really help to show where you're from. So let's take the first line, just do the first three lines with me in this template. I'm from a specific ordinary item. If you remember in George Ella, Ella's poem, she said clothespins. You know, what are clothespins used for? They're used to hang up, hang up clothes on the line. So it tells me that when she was a child, they probably didn't have a dryer in their home and they hung their clothes outside. So think of an ordinary item that is part of your environment that you use a lot. I am from that, whatever it is. Okay, and then in the second line, from blank and blank, and both of those would be product names. Georgella used Clorox, remember it was a, uh, additive that we put in a washing machine to make clothes white. 
Uh, that appeals to a sense of smell because I can smell Clorox. Okay, and carbon tetrachloride, that's another product. So can you list two products that you use often or that are used in your home a lot? And then the third line is I am from the, and then a blank, and that's a home description. George Ellis said, I am from the dirt under the back porch. So she took a particular part of her house, the back porch, and the dirt under it. So I'm getting the image that she probably played there a lot when she was a kid, because obviously she tried the dirt and it tasted like beets, right? Remember? So I am from the, a home description, some aspect of your house or some part of your house or some part of your city or town or country. Okay, and we'll wait a few minutes, hoping to get one or two of you to enter your first three lines so that we could read and share them. Okay, Susan shares with us, I am from Bicycles, from Blueberry Muffin Jiffy Mix, and Hellman's Mayonnaise. I am from black and red shag carpet. I remember that shag carpeting. Wonderful, Susan. Harmita is sharing a line that says, I am from green fields around, okay. Jennifer shares, I am, I am from the Porsche Swing, from Quaker Oats and Scrapple. I am from the Naughty Pine Walls. Wonderful. Ah, Lily Rose says, I am from Crayons and Coloring Books. Those are wonderful ordinary items that lots of us have, right? That's a wonderful line, Lily. Okay, another line from Harmeet from grains and fruits and rivers. Wonderful. Okay, I hope that you're enjoying thinking about um, where you are from and how it's, it's so much more than just the name of a city or a state or a country, that there are so many things that contribute to the places where we're from and, and the purpose of our writing and sharing it is to help us to understand um, you know, how much we are alike and yet how much we are different because we'll be able to make connections with each other as we read each other's poems. Michaela shares, I, I am from cars, from pears and strawberries. I am from red carpet and white windows. I am from daffodils and roses. Wonderful, wonderful, specific images, everybody. Okay, on the next screen, um, I'm now going to just basically help you to understand where you could go from here to finish the lesson. We, we are running out of time for my part of the program. Um, so I just want to remind you that you can use your sensory details sheet to brainstorm, to think of the things that are important to you. And you can organize your poem however you want to, or you could choose the template that's provided to finish writing your own poem. You can, if you want, create a slide program and illustrate it and you can add narration and text. Um, I did that and shared it with you in the lesson plan that will be mailed with you on the my, Where I'm From poem that I wrote. You can convert your slide program into a video. You can film yourself reading your poem using a camera or your phone. And we have a Flipgrid um, page that you can use to record your own poem and to listen to other people recording theirs, uh, their recordings as well. Okay, and on the next slide, um, how can you share your poem with the world? 
it'd be wonderful for you to share it with your friends and your family, but why not share it with the world? Join iEARN if you're not a member. Students, you need to get your teacher's code in order to join. That keeps it safe and secure. So the only way to join is through your teacher. You search for the International Book Club in the, Interna in the Collaboration Center. You then join the book club and you post your poem in a special folder that is entitled Where I'm From. And I would encourage you to read the poems or to watch the media presentations of other students and teachers and comment on them, ask questions, tell others what you like and engage in dialogue. Don't just post, but really try to use the tools that we have uh, to establish and build those friendships like you do in a book club. Okay, and then uh, finally, on the next slide, this just shows you what the home page of the International Book Club looks like. And if you click on the forum, which is um, towards your left, there's a link there. If you go to the forum, you will then see on the next page what our forum looks like. And we have the folder where I'm from, share your poem with the world listed at the top so that you can open it up and you can share your poem there. Okay, so that concludes my part of the presentation. We have um, the panelist Jennifer who's going to share some information with you, but I wanna end by thanking on the last slide, giving some credit to our author, Shamile Mendez, and the illustrator, Jamie Kim, our poet, George L. Lyon, our students who shared, Ahmed, Bibi, and Nisha, and all of the staff um, in New York City who is continuing to do an amazing job connecting us with others um, at this so important time, and it's so important to do so. Greetings to all of you, and, and I hope to um, see you in the International Book Club. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Faye, for this uh, wonderful mini lesson on the International Book Club. Um, we're going to dive into some elements from your, your mini lesson uh, as we share about some tips uh, for online teaching and learning. Uh, but as we're just wrapping up the end of the webinar and looking at these tip tips, I want to encourage anyone to put questions for Faye in the chat box, um, and we'll circle around to them um, at the end of the webinar um, so that if you have a question um, for Faye, um, she's gonna hang out with us for a couple more minutes. Um, so for today, we're just gonna share a couple quick tips and resources um, for online teaching and learning about project-based learning. Um, so in iEARN, we have um, more than 100 projects that connect um, teachers and students around the world. Um, so on the next slide, um, we're going to just take a quick look um, about some, where to go for some really solid project-based learning resources. Um, IRON uh, draws very much on our friends from PBL Works. They have this gold standard for project-based learning and you can look at the different design, um, essential design elements that, um, uh, for how to construct a meaningful and engaging project for your students. Um, we want, in IRON, we want our students to be looking at real world issues and challenges and do something that's meaningful for them in their community uh, and this framework is something that we draw on to help um, structure our projects for for students um, today we're going to look very quickly at um, public products um, so the end result what can you create with your students um, in a project and before we jump there actually i want to ask um, if you noticed anything from uh, phase mini lessons um, what creative ways did you see students sharing their work? Um, so I think Faye showed a couple examples. What uh, creative ways did you see students sharing their poetry and their work? Um, and if you don't mind um, putting them in the chat box, um, we'll read them out as we see. Um, I saw a couple ways that students were um, sharing their poetry. They were taking the, 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 all of their learning, learning about writing and poetry and how to express sensory images and then and then some of them built up, as I see here, into a video um, and using images and really thinking about how they were curating their mes message. Um, this is a really strong example of, um, of project uh, products um, that you can also then share with others outside of just the classroom, which is another key element of project-based learning. Here's a couple other ideas, too, of ways that you can um, um, get your youth connected and engaging in, in some meaningful work and sharing their projects. Um, so a few from the slide here, uh, there is a really wonderful project called um, our Storybook Project. 
And essentially that is uh, students um, in classes, in different classes, um, write a component of the story and pass it on um, to the next student to add to. And so what you're seeing here is some images of the books. Um, so if you're doing any sort of writing projects um, with your students, you can have them add to each other's work. If you're at home, um, perhaps with kids, you might per, uh, consider connecting with cousins or friends and having students add to each other's writing and create one big story, or to pull their work together in, in um, a collection um, that they can publish and share um, with their families. So um, a way to think about some creative writing and pulling that together. Um, for arts and media projects, um, you can have your students engage in doing photo essays. Um, so I like the where I'm from poem. We were seeing some images with the text. Um, students are used to documenting so much in, in images, um, and now is really the time to leverage that. Um, having students pull images um, with their work and, and using that to curate and share. In Iron, we like to do um, also video projects with students, and, and last week with the digital story telling mini lesson we got a, a taste into video production um, so that is another consideration as well if your students are making videos you could bring them together in zoom um, or uh, post them somewhere online for to do a virtual uh, film festival to view and share each other's work so um, we saw some great ideas from Faye with those students um, video recording their poems and then sharing them that way they could do um, sort of like a film festival or a poetry slam, if you will, um, for sharing their creative work. Um, so we are at the top of the hour. I do want to pause and see if there's any questions for Faye. Next week, we're going to look at some quick tips for how you can engage um, with the community and make those, um, those, those projects, those, those final products uh, public and engage with other community members in your learning. Um, but before we wrap and um, end for the day, just wanted to put a shout out for you to join us next week. Um, we'll be doing our final Wednesdays with the World session with Mary Brownell, who's the facilitator of the Iron Finding Solutions to Hunger Project. Um, so please join us there for another great uh, look into a project, mini lesson you can do with students. Um, and we'll be sharing with you um, at the same time next Wednesday, May 13th. And thanks everyone again for joining us. Um, we will be hanging out for a little bit longer after we stop the recording just for questions, um, if there are any from the audience.